Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie. If you are new here, I'm so glad to, oh, there's a spider on my door. No, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Don't do spiders and snakes. <laughs> I've gotten some comments recently about house plants and what house plants I have, how I take care of them, things like that. I don't have a lot and I'm not a house plant like guru. I can tell you which ones I have, what I do with them and what works for me. Our first plant we're gonna talk about is a fiddle leaf fig. This is a plant that I got not too long ago from Lowe's. It's actually grown quite a bit already. Now this is a tropical plant and it likes to live in bright indirect light. A fiddle leaf plant, it can grow to be quite large. Um, they like humidity. Like other plants, I tend to rotate this one each time that I water it because the side that's closest to the window will tend to have more new growth than the other side. So to make sure it grows you know, fairly evenly, you just want to turn it a little bit each time that you water it. Now these plants don't like to be moved around, so once you find a place that you want it to be, you want to leave it there because, like I said, it just gets acclimated to one spot and it doesn't do good if you move it around. These plants like to be watered when the top two inches of soil are dry. They don't like to sit in water. If it has a tray under it, just leave it sitting in that for maybe 30 minutes at the most and then you want to dump that out. If you start to see yellowing in your leaves, that's a sign you're watering it too much. And if you start to see brown leaves, then your plant either it's not getting enough light or it's getting too much water. So these plants like to be repotted once. Once you start seeing roots coming out through the drainage holes in the bottom, it's time to repot it. My next house plant that I'm going to talk to you about is a pothos. I read recently that you don't want to water a pothos plant very often. You want to let the soil kind of dry out. They don't like to be over watered. Um, and I think I was doing that because the leaves on mine are fairly small. And yet a lot of times pothos leaves are very big. I gave my mom a clipping um, that I had propagated from a pothos plant and her leaves are huge even though it's from the same plant. Hers looks a lot different than mine. So I think I was over watering it. And also, because it's not right beside a light source, I think that has also affected the size of the leaves. The more light the plant gets, the bigger the leaves will grow. Now these do tolerate low light, but like mine here, it's getting light. But if I put it closer to a window, which my, like my mom's is, hers is right beside a window, it would be growing bigger leaves. And I didn't do that just because I really wanted one on top of my hutch, something that would kind of crawl across and down the sides. So for now, I'm going to leave it here. This one is one that I propagated from that main plant, and it's growing nicely. These can be propagated in soil, but I personally prefer water propagation just because I like to be able to see the roots grow and I don't know, there's just something interesting about just seeing roots grow from a stem. <laughs> so that's my propagation method of choice. So I thought today it would be fun if we actually propagated a couple of plants um, so I can show you how I do it and then maybe we can keep a timeline and see how long it takes it to grow roots. So I thought that would be a fun little experiment. So we're gonna do that. In my opinion, the pothos has been the easiest that I've found to propagate. So we're gonna start with this one. We're gonna take our scissors and trim right here behind this little node that you see a little brown spot and the leaf comes out right above it. That's where we're gonna clip. So I like to buy fun little jars like this um, when I'm out thrifting and I use these for my propagation bottles and then I just set them in the window seal in my kitchen window. So I think we will put this little pothos stem in this little jar. Now I am again using bottled water just because ours has a lot, our tap water has so much chlorine in it. Our next house plant that we're going to talk about is a ZZ plant. Now when somebody asks me what kind of house plant they should buy or they say they always kill their house plants, this is the kind of plant that I recommend. It's a trooper. It is very difficult to kill this thing. 
Now I went a while without watering this one because that is how this plant likes to be watered. It likes for the soil to get dry and that is because underneath the soil if you look under there there's kind of like I don't know if it's a bulb actually a bulb but it looks like a bulb it's this white hard thing under the soil there and it ho holds moisture so it doesn't need to be watered as often because it's holding moisture in these little bulbs and also in the stem and the leaves you notice that the leaves on this plant are a lot more like shiny maybe waxy looking they almost can look like a fake plant sometimes you do want to make sure that there's good drainage holes in the bottom of your pot that way it's not holding a bunch of moisture in the soil um, as far as sunlight goes these plants like bright but indirect light so you don't want to put them right beside a window maybe six feet away or so if it's not close enough to natural light the plant will start to droop um, and one thing to notice is that the plant will start to grow towards the light source so if you put this to the right of a window it's going to grow towards that window so what I like to do is every time I water it I'll just slowly turn the pot each time so that it's getting an even amount of light I guess you could say so it doesn't start growing all to one side if that makes any sense um, I found that this plant is also really easy to propagate I've gotten probably four or five plants off of my original one um, all you need to do is clip one of the stems and then place it in water and over time it will start to grow roots and then you can plant it again in a new pot just like the other ones that we're talking about today. Now this plant also can be propagated by dividing it so if it gets too big for its pot and you can we want you need to repot it you can also separate it at that time. All you do is just go in and pull the roots apart separate the little bulbs and then just plant it in a new pot and it should grow just fine. One of my newer plants is this Calethea rattlesnake plant. I feel like it's a very unique plant and I really like how it has the dark purplish color underneath and then these vibrant greens on top. I also like how the leaves are wavy like this. Rattlesnake plants tend to get up to around 30 inches tall. These plants are low light tolerant, so they like medium to low light, no direct sunlight. I have my blinds down most of the time except in the late afternoon, so I feel like this one does okay right here by the window. Um, this plant would be good in any low light situation like in a corner or even in a bathroom. Um, as far as propagation goes, I googled it and they recommended propagating this when you go to repot the plant by just dividing it. Um, I've never done that before because it's a fairly new plant to me. When you water this plant, you want to keep the soil evenly moist, but you don't want to oversaturate it. If it sits in water, the leaves will start to turn yellow and then they'll wilt and die. So if it's not getting enough water though, the leaves will start to curl up and turn brown. So you just want to keep the soil evenly moist. It also likes humidity, so it enjoys a good misting every now and then. And an interesting thing about this plant is that the leaves close up at night and then they reopen again during the day. So it's a very cool plant. The last plant I'm going to talk to you about today is a snake plant. There are several different variants of snake plants and oftentimes I know around here some people call them mother-in-law's tongue. Not sure why, <laughs> but this is another plant that's very easy to care for. I have two different types in my home. These plants are low light tolerant and can do very well in low light, but they'll grow much faster and taller in indirect bright light. I pretty much let the soil dry out on these and then I'll soak it through with water and let it dry out again. They, that's the way they seem to like it. They need less water in the winter especially. Um, this grows kind of slow but it can grow very tall in the right conditions. If you want them to grow bigger you can keep transplanting them into bigger pots but if you want to keep them small maybe you want to put them on a shelf or something like that then you can just keep them in smaller pots and that will encourage them to not grow as big. Once the plant matures you can divide these and make more plants. It's important to note that these plants are toxic. If you have a pet who tends to chew on plants then you definitely want to keep these up 
out of reach. I've never tried to propagate that, but I have read online that you can. So I took a little clipping right here and what they did online is they just cut a piece off and put it in water and it grew roots. So I'm interested to see if this is gonna work. I'm actually gonna use this juice glass. I don't have a like wide bottle. All my bottles are kind of narrow. It's kind of big though, let's see. I don't really have anything any smaller, so we're gonna we're just gonna stick with that. All right, so we have this in water, and I mean I'm not sure I'm doing this correctly because I've never done one of these before. I don't know if that's too much water. Let's pour a little bit out. We'll see what happens with that. I went ahead and also took a clipping from my ZZ plant. So we have three separate clippings that we are gonna monitor and see how long it takes to grow roots on each one of these baby plants. So I'll show you how these are coming along in my future videos. Y'all, I've been putting off painting this baseboard forever now. I don't know why, but today we're gonna get it done, finally. I'm tired of looking at it. I debated back and forth on whether to paint it white or whether to paint it the same color as my board and batten wall. I asked you guys for your opinions and ultimately I decided to go ahead and paint it the same color as the board and batten. I just thought it looked better. I thought it would look odd with having the white down at the bottom. Now I have decided that I'm going to go ahead and extend this board and batten down my kitchen wall. I didn't tape this trim off before I started painting. I'm pretty good with painting trim. So I just usually will just paint and keep a baby wipe nearby. And if I get a little on the floor or something, I'll just wipe it right off. Do you guys find that you put off projects and put them off and put them off? And then when you finally do it, it only takes you like 20 minutes. And you sit and just, you know, aggravate yourself about it all the time thinking, I really need to do this. I really need to do this. But you just put it off and put it off and put it off when you could just get it done in like 20 minutes. So I'm trying hard to stop doing that. I am very bad about procrastination. Like my bathroom wall, when I did my bathroom makeover, I still have like a above my shower and right on the side of my shower, I still have some wall there that needs a second coat that I have never finished. So I gotta get that done too. <laughs> if you have that issue like I do where you procrastinate, just celebrate the little things. That's what I do. I got this baseboard painted today. I accomplished something that I've been putting off and it looks so much better. I have to say this little area is one of my favorite spots in our little nest lately. I just, with all the natural light coming through, it's just really pretty to me. What you got there, Timmy? That looks like a parcel, a parcel from one of our fine viewers. Somebody sent you a parcel? A parcel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that what they called it years ago, a parcel? Uh-huh. I don't know how to open it up right Nice. <laughs> Can well, you get a, it? It's a cup. It's a cup? Yeah. Ain't that pretty. What's on it? Ooh. Look up there. <laughs> Elvis? Oh. How cool is that? My goodness, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Man, that's neat. It? No, that's all right right there. <laughs> I'm gonna have to measure my fluid intake and just drink out of this all the time. <laughs> Hello, Miss Patricia, though you have made my day, my week, my month. I, that's beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Looks just like me. Uh-huh, <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> I thought it was pretty like oh, it. Yeah, it's got all the little sparkles on it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It just tickles me to death. <laughs> mm, is that good? Is it good?
doing? <laughs> Hi. Are you wanting to play? Huh? Mama's trying to work. I gotta edit this video for our friends. So do. Come on. You wanna play? You wanna go play? You wanna go? You wanna go? Come on. Let's go. Let's go this way. Come on. I <laughs> see you peeking around the corner. What are you doing? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Alright guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks again so much for watching. I hope you have a great week and we'll see you in the next video.